good morning or good afternoon everyone depending on where you're joining us from and welcome to today's webinar my name is Theodore from Business Review and I will be your host it's our pleasure to have Samsung Biologic with us today who will be presenting this webinar entitled partnering with CDMOs for a sustainable future today's uh, guest speaker is James Choi who is a executive vice president, chief marketing officer, and head of global public affairs. Before we begin, I would like to welcome you to our webinar platform on 24. Uh, you will notice that this webinar is browser based. So if you disconnect for any reason, please just click on the link that you have received via email to rejoin the session. In order to ask questions, you can send them in via the questions widget. Just type them into the box at the top right hand corner of your screen and click submit. We allocate some time at the end of the session to address any questions or thoughts that you might have. Please use the yellow help widget if you require any assistance and you can move, resize and maximize any of the windows in front of you to get a better view of the slides. But now, please allow me to welcome James. Thank you. Uh, and thanks to all who are uh, tuning in to watch. Uh, my name is James Choi and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer and Head of Global Public Affairs at Samsung Biologics. And uh, in this webinar, I'll be talking about the current state of the healthcare industry's carbon emissions and how partner partnering with a sustainable CDMO like Samsung Biologics is critical to reducing the industry's global carbon footprint. Quick background on, uh, on me, uh, I spent uh, over 33 years in the healthcare uh, industry, starting with Philips, uh, ranging from positions from customer service e-business technology. Uh, there, there I moved to uh, USIS uh, Altegrity, and then uh, Beckman Coulter, five years as a chief information officer and uh, uh, security. And recently uh, spent the last eight and a half years of Samsung Biologics in various roles and uh, currently head of uh, marketing and uh, global public affairs. So today I'm gonna to be going through how climate trends are impacting global health, uh, why, health why the healthcare sector uh, must transition to net zero, the key challenges it'll face in the process, as well as how CDMOs like Samsung Biologics are in a unique position to make an impactful change. Let's talk by briefly discussing some alarming global climate trends, uh, some unprecedented extreme heat temperatures uh, with longer heat waves and droughts are becoming more and more frequent. Uh, climate change has made high temperatures five times more likely. In North America and California, over 8,000 wildfires in 2020 alone contributed to the burning of nearly four and a half million acres of land. The Australian bushfire during the 2019 and 2020 season killed 3 billion animals. In Europe, the summer heat waves last year resulted in 16% excess deaths in July, over 53,000 lives. And here in Asia and South Korea, we've experienced deadly monsoon rains, the worst in more than a century, with cities experiencing the heaviest rainfall in decades that left several dead and displaced hundreds. So climate change is real, and its impact to lives and the planet is undisputable. Climate change starts by impacting the environment, as we all know. Extreme weather events, along with heat stress and air quality, ultimately impacts water quality. Droughts and other environmental contamination impacts food security and safety. Climate change has also made conditions more optimal for the spread of some infectious diseases, including waterborne and mosquito-borne diseases, as well as premature deaths due to cancer. In the next half century, there's estimated to be 4,000 new spillover viruses from one species to another. In fact, recent studies indicate a disturbing trend. Nine million deaths annually due to air pollution, five million deaths annually due to suboptimal temperatures, and two degrees Celsius increase will be the tipping point for global warming, irreversible warming. And that's why one and a half is the target. All these events have shown that our health is inextricably linked to the health of the planet.
The healthcare sector, the global healthcare sector, generates approximately four to five percent of total global emissions. That's roughly two and a, two and a half gigatons of carbon dioxide equivalent, or the equivalent of the fifth largest emitting country in the world. Looking at the emission sources within the healthcare sector, about half are driven by supply chains. The remaining carbon footprint is linked to R&D, patient care settings, and patients. The vast majority of the supply chain emissions are generated by early stage processes, such as raw material extraction and processing. It's essential for manufacturers to work alongside their suppliers to decarbonize supply chains for healthcare systems to reach net zero. So reducing emissions across supply chains comes with several challenges. One, calculating biopharma supply chains emissions is challenging and standardized tools are not yet available. Two, much of the early stage product manufacturing takes place in Asia where green power purchase agreements are still scarce. Three, the biopharma healthcare industry is still highly regulated. And four, many of the levers of decarbonization are currently still very expensive. So we'll start with the first one. Tracking emissions is especially challenging in the pharma industry supply chains, as there's currently no common database of emissions factors to help biopharma companies. API producers or early stage chemical companies calculate and track their carbon footprint. As a result, downstream pharma companies have no starting point for their life cycle assessments, which makes benchmarking and measurement of emissions reductions very challenging. Two, as stated before, most of the high volume of manufacturing takes place in Asia, where power grids are currently fossil heavy and access to green energy sources is limited versus other regions. However, recent regulatory developments are facilitating access to renewable power in markets such as China, including through the use of corporate renewable PPAs. Third, the biopharma industry is still highly regulated. So changes to a product's design or the manufacturing process requires regulatory approval. This introduces multi-market complexity, and it can be a time-consuming and uncertain process. Many decarbonization levers and technologies are still expensive or have limited availability in some geographies. Decarbonizing high temperature heat and carbon capture technologies will likely remain expensive for the next 10 years. Implementing manufacturing efficiency measures and switching to renewable power can, however, be done at low incremental costs in many geographies and even save costs over time. The overall incremental cost of, of decarbonizing supply chains is projected to be about 40 to 80 euros per ton of carbon dioxide equivalent abated by 2030. Technology availability and costs continue to evolve much faster than predicted and specifically renewable technologies have persistently matured faster and prices you know, fallen further than predicted. Um, clean transportation also remains a challenge. Sustainable aviation fuel while having 80% lower carbon emissions is still four to five times more expensive than normal jet fuel. Green shipping is also about 65% more expensive than normal shipping. But that said, as previously mentioned, prices for SAF and green shipping is expected to decline as the demand and hence the production of sustainable transportation increases across the healthcare sector. Lastly, relying on PPAs to reach 100% renewable energy is challenging due to limited availability. And there's still a variation in accessibility if you look at the chart both geographic-wise and expense-wise. The green premium is anticipated to increase until about 2030, and until then, green electricity needs will continue to rise amidst a deficit of supply. So with all that, to meet scope three targets, biopharma companies must work with suppliers 
to set ambitious emissions reduction targets aligned with a 1.5 Celsius pathway. We need to work with CDMOs to decarbonize operations and cascade targets further upstream. And they need to create new solutions for green transport, electricity, and heat. Reducing emissions in these areas is key as they represent over half of the total abatement potential across the healthcare supply chains. And this is why a sustainable CDMO partner uh, is critical to helping drive change and reducing the footprint of healthcare. So Samsung Biologics recognizes this, and we recognize that our ability as a CDMO to help drive climate change response. And we've identified the opportunities towards achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions across our direct operations and supply chain aligned with our clients' net zero targets. Despite the complex nature of bioprocessing, our environmental management strategy outlines a number of core activities to reduce emissions, including process energy optimization, transitioning to renewable energy by investing in solar panels and utilizing external resources, converting to zero emission vehicles and minimizing the use of disposables in the manufacturing process through waste management and recycling. In terms of ESG management, Samsung Biologics is also working to drive successful decarbonization by committing to 100% renewable power through the Climate Group's RE100 initiative. Last year, we were recognized for our rigorous reporting standards and progress by the CDP and EcoVadis, as well as major ISO certifications. In terms of global engagement, we're also part of the Sustainable Markets Initiative, which was founded by King Charles III in January 2020 at Davos. And under the mandate of the Terra Carta, the coalition's mission is to build a coordinated global effort to enable the private sector to accelerate the transition to a sustainable future. And at COP26, the SMI launched the Healthcare Systems Task Force, which is a public and private collaboration led by the CEOs of seven global pharmaceutical companies, along with the public sector, including the WHO, UNICEF, and leading academics, as well as NGOs. And I'll explain what that makeup is in the next slide. And at COP27 last year, our task force published a series of white papers with concrete data-backed recommendations for policymakers on how to decarbonize health systems, not only in supply chains, but also in the patient care pathways where we can redesign treatment protocols to reduce emissions in clinical practice while improving patient outcomes and reducing costs. And this year, Samsung Biologics was honored to be recognized with the Terra Carta seal by the SMI for our contribution and working alongside our industry peers for this global effort. A little more about the uh, SMI Health Systems Task Force. As mentioned before, it's a coalition of uh, public and private companies. Overall, the Health Systems Task Force is championed by Pascal Soriat, the CEO of AstraZeneca, Balin Garrijo, CEO of Merck Group, um, working group champion for the digital healthcare uh, uh, working group. Uh, Paul Hudson, uh, CEO of Santa Fe, is the champion for patient care pathways. And as, as I mentioned before, supply chains being a critical component of the healthcare decarbonization effort. Uh, John Rim, uh, our CEO, uh, and Samsung Biologics is championing the supply chains. And again, uh, all of these uh, public uh, and private sector leaders uh, are there with us uh, in this coalition to really help drive supply chains uh, for key priorities, which are driving common supplier standards and targets, expanding green PPAs beyond the EU, uh, EU and US, uh, accelerating green transportation and logistics, and lastly, seeking solutions uh, for green heat and circularity. I'll talk more about this in the next slide. So the private sector members are taking some specific concrete action to decarbonize the supply chains. Of these, the, uh, the four are major ones that I want, I'd like to cover in this slide. So first, there's a critical need to engage with our often shared suppliers in decarbonization so that we can help drive uh, sustainable impact right from the upstream supply. Uh, last year, we committed to a set of common supplier standards and are now working collaboratively with those suppliers to achieve emissions reduction targets, acknowledging each other's suppliers' starting point and sustainability maturity. 
Our aim with this is to increase focus on and incentivize decarbonization efforts across the supply chain. We're also looking at how, as a collective, we can identify, pilot, and scale new solutions for green electricity, transportation, and heat. That includes evaluating renewable corporate PPAs in Asia, China, and India this year, supporting innovative solutions to decarbonize transport, such as exploring SAF oil takes, and jointly piloting new green transport corridors, and finally, working with providers to explore green heat solutions by 2025. And going forward, the task force will continue to work together to ensure the delivery of these commitments. While all stakeholders can support decarbonizations, CDMOs can uniquely add value to enable our client sustainability strategy. This includes partnering with a CDMO that commits to initiatives and, and global partnership to drive impact. A CDMO that has already set near net zero targets while tracking and disclosing product level emissions and a CDMO that engages in strong supplier relationships to align with our clients in their net zero efforts. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for uh, listening to this webinar. And uh, it was my pleasure to explain how Samsung Biologics can be your sustainable CDMO partner uh, to help drive net zero across the uh, supply chains and for healthcare. Thank you. Uh, thank you, James. Uh, just a reminder to uh, the audience once again, uh, you can still submit your questions. You can send them in via the questions widget. Just type them into the box uh, of your screen and click submit. Uh, I can see we already have one question from the audience. Uh, so James, uh, Samsung Biologics recently announced the almost near completion of plant four. Uh, and the proposed plan to begin construction of the next facility at a second bio campus as the company expands, how is it offsetting its emissions with each new facility? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, you know, as we continue to scale out our infrastructure and add uh, capacity uh, by building plants, uh, we are always looking at ways to incorporate uh, energy savings and efforts to minimize our greenhouse emissions. And uh, these uh, include, um, you know, not an exhaustive list, but include uh, various uh, initiatives uh, and investments, uh, including solar panels and ultra low NOx burners, uh, which are power uh, facilities. And, uh, you know, we're, we're implementing these technologies, uh, especially starting with our plant four. Uh, additionally, in terms of green infrastructure, our, our new facilities are utilizing uh, external heat to boil water, uh, which will reduce our natural gas usage. Uh, and, there, and all of our plants are designed to maximize energy uh, efficiency across the operations. And uh, we've uh, invested significantly in digital technology to monitor uh, power usage and utilities usage across all our plants to you know, ensure this optimization continuously takes place. And then lastly, it's all about renewable energy, as I mentioned. Uh, while they're still uh, scarce in Asia, we're going to continue to work with uh, the energy providers to look at uh, ways to accelerate that and uh, incorporate uh, usage uh, into our facilities to ensure that we, re uh, that we reach and enable our clients to reach their, our net zero targets. Thank you, James. Uh, moving on to the, to the next question. Suppliers vastly vary in their ability to implement and meet sustainability targets. How does Samsung Biologics plan to partner with its suppliers to help them move towards decarbonization? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, suppliers are key because, um, you know, we as a CDMO are our clients, uh, part of their scope three. And as a CDMO, we share a lot of the same suppliers as I mentioned before. And this is something that uh, we recognize as our greatest challenge because in our case, our scope three is about 83.9% of our total emissions. And that comes from our supply chains. So in order for us to achieve net zero, we got to work with our suppliers and making sure that they also achieve net zero. So in the near term, we're working with our partners to set those net zero targets 
uh, align with the 1.5 Celsius pathway and joint climate initiatives such as SBTI and RE100. Um, and all of the things that uh, as an SMI, as a sustainable markets initiative that I mentioned before, uh, as part of our uh, supplier standards and targets and uh, all of those efforts, we are working in alignment uh, with our peers and our clients and the public sector in the SMI uh, as a holistic aligned effort to um, channel all of our suppliers in the same uh, direction to achieve net zero together. Uh, so we're gonna continue to explore those opportunities uh, starting with common reporting mechanisms and uh, setting uh, standards, uh, net zero targets uh, to make sure that uh, we are successful in leading the effort to achieve net zero and ensure that for our clients. Uh, thank you, James. Uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for addressing questions today. But please bear in mind, if your uh, question was not addressed today, this could happen on a later date. Uh, so that just leaves me to thank once again, James, for what was a great presentation and uh, to Samsung Biologics for sponsoring this session. To our attendees, you will shortly receive an email telling you how you can access the on-demand version of this webinar, or you can access it through our website, which is www.bmi-live.com slash events. We look forward to sharing further webinars with you, so please do keep an eye out on the website I just mentioned. Thank you once again, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.